Welcome to the Fangled Cast, brought to you by Fangled Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. Hi, right, welcome back to the Fangled Cast. Today is going to be a great conversation with a good friend of mine, Monty Clark from Relevant Marketing. And I'll, I'll let Monty tell you just a little bit about what he does before we get into the topic. Really appreciate you having me on, Andrew. Looking forward to the discussion. Um, really, what I do is I integrate marketing and sales together on social media. You know, what I found is that you can go to almost any company and there's a division between marketing and sales, right? And so how do you create the messaging that is going to be useful for a salesperson to then take that and build their own personal brand, if you would, to go out and get legitimate leads and sales in the door? A lot of times there's so much of a of divide in between these two, it becomes difficult to actually grow the business in the way that it should grow because of that uh, divide between the two. So we really work hard on getting the right messaging out of marketing based on what they're hearing from salespeople and getting these two teams to work together so that they can grow their companies. Yeah. And it's interesting because we, we, we tend to, to have, although a similar skill set in terms of what we do, both working fractional chief marketing officer jobs and also you know coaching and working with individuals and, and, and other types of companies. But the part that I really wanted to talk about today is the, the coaches that are out there and the LinkedIn coach mm -hmm. and the other social media coaches out there. Because it, it seems like the day COVID hit, all of a sudden, every person who lost their job became a coach. Yeah. Uh, there's a data, I think someone had said to me that there was over a million new life coaches on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the question at hand is when the quantity is that big and someone actually has a need to grow their business, to learn how to leverage LinkedIn, other social media, uh, there, there, there has to be a way of finding somebody who's accomplished and proven like you are. And I'm curious if, not, not so much that we're trying to promote our own businesses, but if, if I'm a guy who says, you know what, I really need to, to do this, how do I find somebody that can actually help me? Yeah, you know, you make, a, you make an excellent point. Um, there has been a flood of coaching online right now. Um, I think so much of that has to do with A, either businesses clo closing or people getting into the position where they're in their upper 40s, early 50s, they've reached a certain level with a company. Now they're making too much money. They're easily replaced with somebody that's younger, right? So now they find themselves on the market where um, it may be more difficult and challenging to find a job just because there is such a flood of that sector, right, mm -hmm. in the marketplace. So, you know, what's the best thing to do? Well, become a coach. It used to be called consultants, right? You know, right. we used to be consultants when that happened. Um, now there's been this big push into coaching. So it can become a challenge really to um, figure out who knows what and who's who would be right you know for somebody in whatever particular niche that you're looking for but specifically what we're talking about in terms of linkedin or social media how do you and branding how do you go about doing that i, I you know i think you have to uh really pay attention to what they do online themselves and to uh their history and whether or not they have a track record if you would of helping people with what they're saying they're going to coach around. So what, um, let me ask you then, then what, what kind of questions would you ask somebody in an initial conversation as you're talking to someone about potentially being your coach to, to, for example, improve your, your ability to use LinkedIn as a, as a social media tool? You know, quite honestly, I would back up just a minute before I even got to the questions. Okay. Right. Because, um, you can tell so much about where somebody's at and what they know based on their own activity on the platform. Sure. Right. So you can go to somebody's profile and you can see how they've written it out. They can, you can see how they've developed it. And, and if it looks different than the way most people do, that's your first cue. Okay. Positive or and negative you, first cue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it definitely is. I mean, you can first impressions mean a lot, right? So, I mean, if they've got an impressive uh, profile, 
Um, and it looks different from yours, better. That's, that's your first key. You scroll down to their recommendations and I think a lot of people miss this element um, in profiles. If they have a lot of current recommendations, now you have to be careful that these aren't fake recommendations and stuff like that or self-written recommendations. Mm -hmm you know, that they send to people. But if it's very clear and obvious through the recommendations that, that this person has been helping a lot of people and what exactly they've been doing for people, if they're very clear in what they um, outline that they will do for you and that they have testimonials that back that up, then I think you're free to contact that person or, or engage that person to figure out what they will do for you. So, so yeah, go ahead. I know for me, a, a lot of the time, I read the content that they've created and also try to find yeah. where they've commented on other people's. Because many, many times, we, we've had this discussion before, on the profile, the person looks dandy. They look great. Yep. <laughs> then you go out and you look and they kind of write mean things yep. or, or uh, things that aren't really relevant where, you know, that maybe their their idea of, commenting on somebody else's post is to steal it yeah. by, by putting content that, that to draw back to them rather than allowing people to read something positive they've written that would interest them. So those... no, no doubt about it. And I think um, you make an excellent point of how do they engage other people? That's going to give you a, a real clue. Um, but what, what is the content that they put out themselves, right? Is it, uh, to your point, is it relevant? Are, are they... Um, are they putting content out there of value or is it just, you know, common stuff that's that's not engageable at all? And then what is their engagement on that content? Yep. Because you want to work with somebody that's going to be able to direct you in terms of what kind of content that's going to be relevant to your niche and your market. And then how are you going to draw people in so that you can start having conversations that's going to lead to opportunity? Yeah. Right. And then the, the very one of the very first questions that I would ask any coach, if you would, or guru is how much automation do you do? If you have somebody that's wanting to, if you have a coach that's just wanting to set you up with a bunch of automation programs, you need to get rid of that coach. I agree. OK, because LinkedIn while there is one of the major problems with LinkedIn is that there is so much automation on the platform, it devalues the content, it devalues the engagement, <clears throat> and, um, and it devalues relationships. So the more automation you have, the less opportunity you're gonna to have to actually develop the relationships that are gonna turn into opportunity. And that's exactly what we're trying to uh, to do on the platform is develop the relationships with the right target market that's gonna to lead to the opportunities that's gonna build your business, right? You can't do that through robo spamming people. In fact, if you, if you do robo spam people, what you're doing is eliminating your opportunity for the relationship with that person. And just because there's 675 million people on LinkedIn, that doesn't mean you have the opportunity to connect with 675 million people. That's correct. Yep. LinkedIn only gives you 30,000 people that you can actually connect with as a connection. That's a big number. Nobody needs 30,000 people, right? But your circle that's your first tier circle, the people that are closest to you, if you spam those people, you eliminate that relationship and that opportunity to build that relationship because nobody's going to want to talk to you after that. Exactly. Nobody likes to be sold the second you try and develop a relationship. It's actually against LinkedIn's rules to be doing that. They don't want it you to be, to be pitching on the first, on the first contact. It, it's interesting. I was I was having a sort of a you know fun conversation with a friend, and we were talking about you know the, the kinds of things that people post in terms of content and how I evaluate it. And one of the, the, the common things that I constantly say is a person who's a self-declared in their title influencer probably has never influenced anybody. And if the beginning of the post starts with, I'm posting this to inspire you, chances are there's no inspiration to be had. Yeah. The person reading it gets to decide if you're an influencer or if you're inspiring. 
Um, and and there, there, there seems to be, and I don't know if you agree with this, but there seems to be almost a, a, a kickback, especially in the recruiting world and executive level, of people who overexpose themselves in social media, even with good content, and they get kind of classified as time wasters. It's, I don't know if I want to do business with this guy or hire this guy. He sure, sure seems to spend a lot of time bloviating and writing. And uh, I've, I've heard it quite a bit in just the last month or so. I'm, I'm wondering if you've seen the same. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there are, are a lot of people, um, to your point, claiming to be gurus. They're out there with all kinds of content and everything else. Um, but when you actually get down right to it, they're not making any money. Mm -hmm. You know, they they really don't have any clients. There, there may be a spattering here or there, but um, for the most part, it's it's a fake it till you make it syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that, oh, well, if I just show myself to be this, or if I just proclaim myself to be this and say it is every day, you know, then I automatically am that. Yeah. But I think people see through that, um, especially once you start working with that person. Um, and if you, and if you watch that, their content, um, you'll start to see different things that are actually contrary to how you would want to do things mm -hmm. like tag farming, um, you know, all, all kinds of different you tactics. Tag farming, just for people who don't know what that is, can you define what that means? Uh, tag farming is, is people that will do posts and they'll do one of two things. They'll just load it up with a hundred different people that they're going to tag. Right. And that with the intent of it's, just to get people to come to their post and comment on their post, which will elevate the views of their post. They will tag people that they don't even know that they consider influencers themselves. And if they can, and those are people that have 200,000 followers and so on and so forth, you know, and if they can get those people to come and comment on the post, even if it's just, hey, thanks for the tag, um, that shows up in their news feeds, their network's news feeds, so other people would go look at it and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's another form of um, just manipulating the algorithm, if you would. Sure. To the try reason, and get views. The reason I wanted to find it, because we, we've had this conversation many times mm -hmm. about having a, a solid group of connections that you provide value and can provide value in your business to help grow and vanity numbers. And what yes. is there any advantage that you can see in the long run of having 30,000 connections, even though most of them are people that you could never possibly do business with? Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's certainly advantages to it. Um, if, if I have, thir uh, if I have a network of 30,000 people and you have a network of 3000 people, um, I have a greater potential to get my views or, or to elevate my views within that network than you do. I have a bigger network. However, with that being said, I have been successful uh, and I'm sure you have too with working with people that only have 300 connections mm -hmm. and garnering the same amount of views as somebody with large networks like that. Yeah. I also know people on the platform that were in early when it was very easy to connect and build up these big followings and stuff like that, who have, I know one guy that has, um, he had well over 300,000 followers. When he posts, he gets zero comments, zero likes. Yep. That's, you know, I, I equate it to the, the adage of, you know, instead of targeting a specific thing that you want to hit it's like trying to kill mosquitoes with a shotgun you're, yeah you're you're spreading it out there and you get uh, you know you've got thirty thousand irrelevant connections mm -hmm. who are getting you viewed by three hundred thousand irrelevant other people that can't do business with you on the on this idea that maybe out of those three hundred thousand people that are going to see it because of them one of them might discover you rather yeah. than creating content that's very specific very targeted to interest and gain the folks that you want to talk that you actually do want to network with. You know, Andrew, I always, I always talk to, the first thing I talk to my clients about is you have to treat LinkedIn and social media as a whole really like um, a live networking event, right? And if you think about 
networking, when you show up to an event, if you just sit in the corner and you watch, mm -hmm. nobody will come up and talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. If you show up and you work the room, you're gonna go and you're introducing yourself to people, okay? Um, you're gonna have an initial conversation. That first initial conversation is just a hi, get to know you, shake your hand. It may last five minutes and you're done. You're on to somebody else, you're doing the same thing. Now, if that's all that happened, if, if that's all that you did after, on the end of that networking event, you go home and you've established a number of connections. You still don't have relationships. Mm -hmm. Right now, when you show up to the event the next week and you go find those same people, you shake their hands. Hey, nice to see you. Good to see you again. And you have another conversation and then you find some other new people. You do that consistently over a period of three months where you're showing up week after week and you're going and you're talking to those same people and you're adding more to it every time that you go. Pretty soon, everybody knows who you are. Right. Yep. Absolutely. The other thing that happens is as you're talking to people and you're telling them about the different problem that you solve, in time, when you have established yourself in the relationship with the people that you've been talking to over time, one day you're going to shake somebody's hand and, and they're going to say, hey, you know what, I have that, I, I've got this problem that you can solve for me. Yep. Let's do business, right? <laughs> yep. That is the fundamental of social selling. That is the fundamentals of what LinkedIn is all about. Absolutely. And so many people miss that very simple, and it is a very simple thing. They just, they don't want to take the time. They don't want to, they don't want to accept the connection. They don't want to get on the Zoom call. They don't want to, you know, they just want people to come in and say, I want to pay you. Yeah. Now, the problem is, is that LinkedIn is an Amazon. Yeah. It goes back to when websites first came out. You get, well, I put up a website and I haven't made any money yet. Yeah. Well, okay, that's that's great. If, if you go back to early in, in my career, before the internet existed, when fax machines were new, and you went to, to network, it was a whole set of skills in terms of how to meet someone, learn how to ask the kinds of questions to get people talking. And there's a, there was a whole you know relationship building yes. skill set that came person to person that's very valuable now. And, yep. and folks that jump to that automation that we were talking about before miss out. If Absolutely. I can personally touch, and I don't mean that in a in a physical way during during, during the COVID, but uh, you know, personally touch someone in a way where before I send the connection, I research them. They're a company that I have interest in knowing about, yes. and ask a question to say, "Wow, you you really are," and I, and do and mean it, not just BS them. But mm -hmm. your your company does some really neat stuff. Can we get on a call at some point? And so I can learn more about what you do. I may have application with a client for that. Exactly. Those those connections immediately move in a different way than connect. By the way, I'm really good at this. You should buy my services. Yeah, exactly. And that you know, you if we follow that analogy out even further, automation is basically the same process in the live networking event. If you send somebody in your place with an armful of um, sales sheets yep. and you just walk around and you just, every person you meet, you just hand them a sales sheet, right? Yep. They're gonna look at that, they're gonna crumple it up, toss it over their shoulder and go meet and um, meet somebody to have actually a, a relationship with. Yeah, I, I Nobody does event. business that way. I went to an event where a guy did that and we went around <laughs> the whole room and he passed out, passed out business cards and sheets, business cards and sheets. And then he, he was actually in a conversation with somebody and the event ended and we walked out and his crap was all over the area with the people didn't even move the trash can with it. Yeah. It was it was all over the floor and and you could see because you know when when you, you actually deal with people as people, you can tell the moment you hand somebody a sales sheet that they're not even interested in having it. It's like yeah. the guys when you walk down the streets in some big cities and they're passing out cards, especially in tourist yeah. areas. And and most people either won't grab them or they'll throw them in the guy's face. It's not yeah. networking, it's just annoying. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely is. And, you know, back to your statement or your question about how do you tell whether somebody's legit and stuff yeah. like that and the questions that you would ask. You know, in my opinion, the first thing that I wanted, would want to do is, and I saw a post out there the other day about sampling, right? They were um, 
they were talking about you got to give people a sample of what you can do or sample the product, right? So you have to get on the phone. What's that? That was my post. Was it yours? I thought it might have been. (laughs) Yeah. And and, um, because I look at yours every day, which is good. So, you know, they... When you get on some on the phone with somebody and they can very quickly open up your profile and say, well, here's what I would recommend. Do these things. Mm-hmm. And then tell me about your um, strategy. Tell me about the problem that you solve and tell, tell me what you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. If within five minutes of a conversation, they are giving you strategy, even without doing anything else that you can take and implement, if you go no further, that you can take and implement that day, you've got a coach. I agree. So and that is somebody that you should have another conversation with and that's somebody that you should probably engage. And this this leads really to the second part of what I, what I wanted to talk with you about today. So now I've, I've, I've read, looked at someone's engagement, I've done all the things. I found a guy who's really a good coach. I just hired Monty to, to help me build my my business. And, and, and I, I say that, not kidding, because I, I do know the accomplishments and the great work that you do. So Thank now you. I've got I've got Monty and I'm paying you for your time and I want to get the best out of my time. Me as the client now, what do I need to do to best utilize and, and learn and grow from what you have to offer? Um, so if I'm understanding the question right, as the client, yes. what do you need to do to engage your coach to get the most out of your coach, mm-hmm. to get the most out of your program? Um, you need to work with your coach and the coach should be doing this for you. The coach should be telling you specifically what you do need to be doing to get the most out of it. But once you've identified the strategies and once he's identified the strategy or she has identified the strategies with you in terms of what you're, you should be doing, then you, um, what I do with people is on a weekly and a monthly basis, we determine what the key performance indicators are, are going to be around that strategy and we review them weekly. Okay. So if they, if you are not performing, if you would, then, um, then you need to take a look at why. And the coach needs to be working with you continuously to be able to raise your ability, both on the marketing and the sales end of of the spectrum, right? To be able to grow your business. Because the only reason that you're gonna have a coach is to grow a business. Absolutely. Right? You're not going to have a coach, if we're talking about social media, if we're talking about LinkedIn specifically, unless you hire a coach to help you find a job or something like that. but. For the most part, I work with people, entrepreneurs, business owners and stuff that are actually trying to build a company. So um, LinkedIn is a fantastic platform or vehicle, right? And that's all it is. What we're really talking about here is marketing and sales. And how do you combine the two to use the vehicle of LinkedIn to grow your business? So every week, every month, you should be setting... um, key performance indicators that says, okay, I'm progressing. I'm progressing in marketing. I'm progressing in my sales initiatives. And the plan that I've defined on a monthly basis, broken down into a weekly, then broken down into a daily, are actually functioning and are actually working. And I'm developing and growing my business. If you don't have that, then you're going to be floundering. Uh, Information alone is just simple information. You have to engage that and consider it the, being the 80 20 rule i'm very careful about who i bring on as as clients because if i'm just disseminating information to you and you're getting that information and you're thanking me for that information but then you're not following up and doing anything with that mm-hmm. information if you're not acting on it and pursuing it you're going to fail yep. and when you do fail that looks bad on me that does not look bad on you yep that's interesting. We both carry that same ethical standard. I don't take a client that I don't really think I can help. And mm-hmm. the thickness of their wallet has nothing to do with that decision. Yes. If I meet someone who's looking for another excuse to fail, and I know that's kind of a sarcastic way of saying it, and it's obvious, I say no. You know, it, I, I did a piece a while ago about how to choose a PR person. If your company needs to hire someone in public relations, how do you interview them? And there's multiple things that you want to know about them. But the most important question to ask a PR agent 
is how often do you turn down a client? Mm. Because if they say they never do, you don't want them. Yeah. Why, why would you hire a PR person that thinks they can help everybody? Because not everybody can be a celebrity. Not everybody deserves the public spotlight. They don't have, they're, they're, they they can't turn a stone into a flower. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting that you say that. And of course, it's, it's, also part of the reason why I like working with you because it's when you're aligned when you're aligned in your your both ethics and morals, it's a lot easier for folks to uh, to, to to be able to grow together. Well, no doubt about it, and, and you know, unfortunately, we kind of live in a society where people I won't say people are lazy. I think people just expect things to be easy. Yep. Right. And there's nothing easy about marketing or sales. Yep. Both take substantial effort right yeah so you know when i'm talking to entrepreneurs when i'm talking to you know people that are wanting to build a business you know business development people it's all the same right it is how much effort are you willing to put into it? and i cannot tell you how many times i have sat down with a client day one and we're and we're discussing what they want to accomplish and they say well i don't have any time to spend on linkedin and my response is well you don't have any time to build your business then yeah Okay, if you're not going to invest in the things that are actually going to grow your business, the next thing that I hear is, well, I don't think my market's on LinkedIn. Okay, well, if it's not on LinkedIn, where would it be? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so, and, and, I, and I deal predominantly, Andrew, with um, B2B clients. Sure. Um, that's that's where I focus predominantly. I do work with some B2C clients, but those, those B2C clients also have a product that are that's sold through a B2B process. Mm -hmm. So predominantly most of it's B2B. But and I, I go across channel. I you know, there's um, channel being LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, even your website, you know, stuff like that. I have strong SEO background and stuff too. But you know, you have to take a look at a program, but the primary thing is if you are not willing to invest in yourself, no amount of money you pay me is going to get you there. You know, I want to go back to something that you said about it's not easy. The fascinating part of it is people who are really good at something make it look easy to people. Yeah. And then they jump on board and say, well, it, it's, they made it look easy. It must be. And, yeah. and eventually the goal is that you'll be able to coach someone to the level that it'll look easy to someone else when they're doing it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, people want to know how I built myself up. Right. And I, and I tell them, um, in May of 2019, I had left my job, decided I was going to get back into building my own business. Um, when I started on LinkedIn, I, I've had an account since 2008 in May of 2019, I had 552 connections. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. I invested, I started pouring into LinkedIn and you know what, I spent probably 13 hour days on LinkedIn, month after month after month after month. And um, a year and a half later today, I have close to 18,000 followers. Now that's a short amount of time to, with the LinkedIn the way it is right now, that's a short amount of time to build up that kind of a following. It took massive effort. It, it was it was not just you know I'm going to show up on the platform an hour a day and I'm going to you know I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. No, I, I invested into the platform. I invested in and things have evolved over time in terms of how I engage that platform and how I engage people on the platform, so that I have a very strong understanding now of how you can actually build business using LinkedIn. Yep. But every single person's business is going to be the same. Not that you have to spend 13 hours on the platform. That exactly is why you go out and find a coach like yourself or myself that has put in that kind of time, that has developed an understanding of how they can do it for themselves. And then they can cut the amount of time that you're gonna do it, yep. that it's gonna take for you to be successful by a fraction. And that's actually what you're paying for. Yep. And if you can, and if you find somebody that can do that for you, then pay them, pay them yep. as much as it takes. Because 
they're going to get you there so much faster and then help you build your business so much faster. Absolutely. But I can't stress enough that it, that it does take effort and you have to be able to will it or willing to work it yourself. Yeah. It's, it's in a future podcast, I'm going to do one about sort of the next level once you're in LinkedIn and how we use and leverage social media through lead nurturing programs that, that we create. Yep. We'll have to come back together and talk about that, how you use groups uh, within Love the to. industries that you're going after and and how you can leverage uh, the leads that you ended up putting aside because yep. you said no, yep. and how you can continue to target and reach out to those people until rather than you even having to call them back, they become an inbound lead based Absolutely. on the nursing programs. We'll, we'll do that on another another day, another time to not make this Love to. go on too long. But this this has been a fascinating conversation. Uh, I always, I always love, we, you know, we, we get on and say, Hey, 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 hey uh, Monty, I need 10 minutes and we're yammering for an hour. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's always, always a pleasure. Can you just, since I've got you for the moment, let people know how they can find you. Absolutely. The, the number one best way is on LinkedIn. Um, you can please connect with me, follow me, anything you want to do there. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, small business person in business development, stuff like that, I have a private Facebook group to message me. I'd love to have any of those uh, categories of people that join the group. That is what all we do there is um, help one another with marketing and sales. It's not a sales group at all to where we're selling or pitching each other anything. It's just collaboration to help one another grow our companies. So I'd love to have you in that too. But um, LinkedIn or my uh, website, relevantmarketing.solutions. Fantastic. Thanks so much for coming on today. This was great. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Absolutely. See you soon. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye. Brought to you by Bengal Technologies, where we help you convert every person your company touches into a voracious advocate for your brand. 